What's up, guys? As you can see, I'm back at home. It's good to be home. Uh, that tournament was rough, as you know. Uh, I'm not used to losing so many games. I think that might be the worst. Might have been the worst tournament that I've ever had, as far as like wins and loss ratio. Um, anyway, uh, this is round nine. I was playing at 2100. Uh, I did go out in style, uh, so I'm going to show you this game, and then we'll kind of conclude with some closing thoughts about the tournament. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I was white. Uh, playing Jonas. Uh, this is another kid. He was like 15. Um, there's so many kids that are like just really good at chess. I don't know what's going on, but they're just really all really strong. Anyway, 2100. Here we go. Uh, I played e4. Let me turn this off for a second. Um, I decided, you know what? Let's just have some fun this last round, kind of like I did last time with the, the Latvian Gambit. And I'm like, I'm not going to play the King's Indian right now. We're just gonna, we're just gonna play e4. So he plays e5. And I've had this opening I've been wanting to try out in a longer time control. I played it in speed chess, but bishop c4. This is called the bishop's opening. And no, the point is not to go for the four move checkmate, although this is how the four move checkmate starts, but that's not the idea. Um, and so, yeah, in case you were wondering, knight f6 and d4. So this is called the, I believe it's the Eurosoft Gambit. Uh, basically, you're giving black the option to take whichever pawn they want. Uh, I think it's bad if they take this one because you can take here and then the knight's kind of awkward. It's it's misplaced. It is a little bit tricky. They can play like bishop c5 and you have to know what you're doing. But uh, yeah, just bishop takes f7 and there's a bunch of tactics, but it turns out to be pretty good for white. So um, I knew a little bit about this. I didn't like know a ton. I've played, like I said, just played it a few times in speed chess. But he took this way, which is the correct way. That's the, the best move. And I played knight f3. This is kind of the main line. You sack this pawn next. He's supposed to take it. And then I think I just take here with queen d4, try to castle uh, real quickly, develop the pieces. And it gets pretty tricky, uh, but I think it's a lot of fun for white. So um, he didn't take it. He played d5. And normally in these types of positions, d5 is a good move. Like it's a common sense kind of a move. Um just because it sort of blocks off the diagonal temporarily, lets your bishop out so you can develop. This, it makes a lot of sense. In this case, it's not the, one of the best moves, uh, and I just took it. But I understand why he played that. I don't think he was familiar with this, because he thought quite a bit when I played bishop c4 and d4. So anyway, I took the pawn. He captured. I castled. I'm trying to get the rook involved. Remember, it's very dangerous if your opponent uh, hasn't castled and their king is still in the center. So I'm just trying to take advantage of that. And he played bishop c5. I did follow through, rookie one check. And bishop to e6. The engine actually says at this point, black's in trouble and the best move is king f8. Uh, and so if the engine is telling you the best move is to, to lose castling rights and just slide your king over, you know that there's a problem. So he played bishop e6. And now I invite you guys to pause the video and think through what did I play here? What's the best move for white? And if you're ready to see the solution, the move is knight to g5. And basically, we're just piling up on the bishop. Uh, it's pinned, so it can't go anywhere. And this also has the benefit that it lets my queen out. And, you know, just a nice aggressive move, taking advantage of the fact that he's still not castled. So I played knight g5. Now he castles. And again, this is a good moment. Uh, what do you think the best move is here? This is a little bit more complicated position. So take your time if you want. But yeah, go ahead and pause. And if you're ready to see the solution, so before I tell you the move that I played, which was the best move, I want to just tell you, I was really considering queen h5. Initially, that was kind of like what I thought the idea was going to be. Uh, and engine says it's not a bad move. Um, going for checkmate, I was thinking that if he plays like h6, I can, uh, what was the move I was going to play? Take here, takes, and then takes like this. And I have like potential discover check if the knight moves if the knight doesn't move i'm gonna take it you know maybe i can like sacrifice here like it looked pretty good for me um but i was thinking that he could just play knight f6 and then i'm like okay now what do i do like i, I didn't see much engine is telling me there's a crazy move knight takes 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 oh rook e5 wow i didn't see that that's amazing. Oh, there's a fork there. Okay. Hmm. So I didn't see that when I was looking at it. Um, and I thought that just knight f6 was like going to be pretty good for him. 
So uh, instead, the move that I played, and this is actually the better move, Rook takes e6. So I got to sacrifice a piece finally, and it was actually the, the right time to do it. Sack the exchange, although I didn't really sack the exchange because um, after he takes, I just can take back and I'm getting it right back. So um, this again was another moment where I was considering playing queen h5. And it's almost uh, pretty cool because after knight f6, there's this check here. The problem is he goes over, I can get a fork, but he just sacrifices his rook back. Remember, I just sacked my rook for a knight or for a bishop. <clears throat> now he can sack his for a knight and we get this kind of even position, queen, rook, knight, uh, and three minor pieces, queen, rook, uh, and three minor pieces. And so it's kind of even, but he's like more developed than I am. And even though I have this here, that it's not doing anything. I can't checkmate him. And you can see like, I'm just not developed, right? So like that, that wasn't good. I didn't want to do that. Um, and yes, yeah, so that's why I just took here instead of the queen h5. So now uh, he's got the problem. All three pieces are forked and there's a bishop lined up on the king with the knight here. It's not looking good. There aren't really, really any good moves. Queen d6 was the best chance. He played queen d7. And the problem with that is it doesn't defend the bishop. Queen d6 at least defends the bishop. Um, on queen d6, what was I going to play? Um, I think I was going to take the rook, although I was also considering this takes and then here there's a fork, but I don't think it's good because he can just like threaten checkmate and I'm actually in trouble. Yeah. So I wasn't going to do that. I think I was just going to take it. And then if he, if he takes with the queen, this is hanging. So he has to take with the king. And what was I going to do here? I don't remember. Oh, maybe it was queen f3 check. If the knight blocks, I have queen takes b7. Yeah, I was going to have to do quite a bit of calculating. Um, but he, that didn't happen. He played queen d7. So I was like, oh, okay, well, now the obvious move is just taking the bishop. So I take c5. And at this point, I have two bishops for the rook that I sacrificed, which is a fantastic trade, right? If you remember uh, the other recap where I was, you know, had the rook against the two bishops and that I just couldn't do anything. Remember that game? So same kind of thing. So now I'm on the, the right side of it. I have the bishops. So... He's in a bad position. The, the queen is attacked. There's also a pin on the knight, it's, which is also attacked. So he's limited with where he can even move the queen to. He has to go somewhere that defends the knight. He played here. And uh, if you want to pause, you can figure out what's the move that we should play here. Uh, well, if you said queen takes d4, you are correct. The engine says knight takes b7 is slightly better, but this is the close second. And this move just makes so much more sense from a human standpoint. It defends my knight, defends this, so if there's any types of checkmate ideas, I'm already defended. And more importantly, puts more pressure on the knight, which is pinned, so he can't move it. Has to try to defend. Knight to c3, piling up on it again. He plays b6, creating an attack here, and now I invite you, if you want, uh, one more time, what should I play in this position? What's the best move for white? And if you're ready to see the solution, um, basically we've got this right where we want it. We want to take this and there's going to be a really nice fork and it's it's great for us. Um, but our knight is under attack and there's no reason to like give up the knight. We don't have to. The best move is just to bring the knight back, attack the queen. Queen's going to have to move and then we can go ahead and take this and do our uh, nice little fork here. So for example, if the queen just moves back here, we can just take, take, take. Uh, and then just kind of trade everything and we get this at the end and completely winning position for white so uh when i played yeah when i played knight here he just resigned so that was a 14 move game uh a good one to go out on after the, the rough tournament this felt nice and i'll show you the game review um let me go over here sorry i'm just gonna slide it over 96.8, um, I think, I don't remember if I had maybe one other game that was around 90, but yeah, this was the first one that was basically a perfect game. I don't really think I made any mistakes. Had the one brilliant move, which was Rook takes E6. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. I mean, I think I just got a little bit lucky that he didn't know the opening and I happened to see the right ideas uh, pretty, pretty quickly on this one. But yeah, that's the tournament. I think the big takeaway for me is that I really need to work on tactics and mental endurance. So um, openings, honestly, I don't feel like it, it matters too much. I do like these types of openings 
more than the king's indian um but i think i'm still gonna stick with the king's indian especially against maybe like d4 when i'm black but when i'm e4 i really like play uh, sorry when i'm white i really like playing e4 and um i think i might just go forward with that uh, i don't know i'm still thinking through that but yeah definitely need to work on tactics and just mental uh, and physical endurance is going to help. So anyway, thank you guys for watching these recaps, following along with the tournament. Hopefully you learned something and that was fun. Um, yeah, I'll let you know when I have my next tournament. It's probably going to be a little, little while. I'm going to take a little break, focus on some other things. But I'll be back at some point um, and we'll see if we can get some of these points back. Because I'm sure I, I lost quite a few in this one. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.